Super Light Ones. Good to see you guys. Good to be here with you guys again. It's another night of Bible study. We're in Exodus 21 tonight. This live is going to be about Exodus 21. When you get on here, uh, share this everywhere. Um, comment your questions that you may uh, have have that you want um, answers to. And we'll answer as we go along. You can ask your questions at any time. Uh, we appreciate you following us thus far. We ask that you subscribe to Storm's Enlightenment channel on YouTube. This is where the videos are going to be archived if they are saved. And uh, the Storm family on YouTube as well. We appreciate you guys. All right. Rock and roll. Get your pen and your pad. We're going to get to it. Lord, bless every viewer, every hearer of your word. Lord, you said one man plants another waters, but you bring the increase. Bring the increase in every life under the sound of my voice. Everyone who would see or hear this, may they be blessed by the reading of this word. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding, Lord. Close relationship with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, so last time on Exodus, I got the whole squad here. Last time on Exodus. What's up, sis? Thanks for joining us again. Um, last time God was saying to make an altar for him, right? And don't serve any other God. So he was laying out the commandments in Exodus 20. He was laying out the commandments. And, and the commandments was given to the children of Israel. How you doing, sis? Thanks for joining so the commandments was laid in Exodus 20. So let's see what's going on in Exodus 21. All right. It says, now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy a Hebrew servant, six years shall, shall he serve. And in the seventh, he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master have given him wife and she have borne him sons or daughters the wife and her children shall be her masters and he shall go out by himself and if the servant shall plainly say i love my master my wife and my children i will not go out free then his master shall bring him unto the judges he shall also bring him to the door and unto the door post and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl that's where you get the, the ear piercing and the earrings from, right? It's, it's um, a symbol, symbol of servitude. You know, for all those who have ear piercings and earrings, symbol of servitude. A lot of people say slavery. Serving a slavery is a lot alike. You know, um, slaves, having a slave is uh, a perverted word in modern day times, but it doesn't mean the same as it did back in the days. All right, so study that out, guys. All right, so that's uh, Exodus 21 and 6. That, that was about the earring, if he wanted to um, keep him, right? And it says, and he shall serve him forever, right? And if a man sell his daughter to be a maidservant, she shall not go out as the men servants do. If she please not her master, leave her alone. If she please not her, her master... Right. Who have betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed. I hear y'all talking, y'all distracting me. To sell her unto a strange nation, he shall have no power, seeing he have dealt deceitfully with her. I, I'm, I'm going to read that again. It says, if she please not her master who have betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed to sell her unto a strange nation. He shall have no power, seeing he have dealt deceitfully with her. So, all right. So, if, if a master got with his maidservant, then... Um, she shall be set free, but he can't sell. She can't be sold because that will be deceitful, 
right? Um, uh, understand throughout the Bible, it talks about how a, a man uh, defiles a woman. You defile a woman by, you know, taking her to yourself. Shalom, shalom. Thanks for joining. By taking her to yourself or um, um, taking her to be your wife and then giving her away. Um, in the New Testament, it talks about whoever, whoever uh, marry anyone that is divorced, they commit uh, adultery. Anybody who they, who they get with, they're committing adultery. So in that way, they're defiled. So uh, that person should be set free. Um, later on, I don't know if it, if it said it already, but it talks, it talks about one of the laws is the bill of divorcement. That's how that comes about. So you can see how the laws um, are changed throughout time. A lot of people get confused. Like, if God gave us the Ten Commandments, why in the New Testament it says that, um, you know, it's no longer an eye for an eye? You know what I'm saying? Uh, why can't I fight fire with fire? You know, Jesus came and perfected that. So um, we're seeing the laws change over time and, and, and being improved through God. And as God's uh, people or the children of Israel or as we uh, start being more attentive, more obedient, being transformed, we become greater and greater. All right. So, of course, if you look in the Old Testament, things will look worse than what they are today. Right. All right. So it says, and if you have betrothed her unto his son, he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. And if he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her, her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. So, you know, God, God is saying uh, treat them respectfully. Treat uh, people fairly, whether a servant, a maid servant, a male servant, um, you know, treat them fairly. And you can see the parallel to this in Ephesians chapter 4, 5, and 6 for all you note takers, right? It says... Um, and if he do not these things, these three unto her, then shall she go free without money. He that smiteth a man so that he die shall be surely put to death, right? And if a man lie not in wait, but God deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint thee a place whether he shall flee. All right, so so if if you killing somebody on purpose, then you shall be put to death. But if now it's talking about kind of like self defense or it was a mistake, it, uh, they gave you a place to run. They gave you a place to run, right? Um, but if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, thou shalt take him from mine altar that he might die. All right, so you know. This is a big sin, the separation from God. You, he don't, you don't get to stay in a holy place, right? So anybody who was confused about those laws or was twisting those laws, now you get the cl clarity of the laws that was being set out. It says, and he that smiteth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. So um, smite can mean kill. Study this out. You know, um, smite can mean kill or hit. I think it's hit. You know, I can, I can check it. But I'm not going to do it during this service. So that's something for you to study. You want um, to take something with you. So um, check out the original language and what it means by smite in Exodus 21 and 15. All right. So surely be put to death for smite his mother or his father. I, I remember the older folks used to tell me, don't hit your mother. You'll, um, something bad will happen to you for that. You know, and I, was, and I had some truth to it. It says, and he that stealeth. I, I want to go on that for a minute. That has some truth to it because think of the the level of disrespect or lack of communication and misunderstanding that it takes, you know, for, for you to be fighting with your parents. You know what I'm saying? So uh, God is a God of unity. God is a God that, that, that loves family, right? And it's important for us to, to um, deal in unity for us to get things done as a community, right? So um, it's important because the fights, the quarrels between families and any and every place, you know, it affects the whole entire world. You know what I mean? So um, I want I, I wanted to, you guys to see how serious that was. Right. So make sure you get it right with your family members. If you have anything going on with them, uh, especially in these times. It says, and he that curse of his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. So now I'm really thinking that smite is only hit. Instead of kill, because smite can mean kill. So um, I, I'm thinking it's hit because he said, 
if you curse them, if, if you curse your father or your mother, you shall be put to death. So it says, and if men strive together and one smite another with a stone or with his fist and he die not, but keep his bed. Now that's confirmation again, because smite with your fist and, and, and is, and it's, uh, if he die or not, then it's telling you that, um, that it's, it's only hit. So hit with a stone or with his fist and he died not, but keep it, but keep it his bed. If he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, then shall, then shall he that smote him be quit. Only he shall pay for the loss of his time and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. Think about, um, you know, uh, when somebody d does something to you, somebody get hit by a car, right? They, they get big lawsuits, right? So that's where it comes from. These are the origins of the things, right? Laws get better. A lot of people think the laws are worse, but, you know, law is made so that the criminal can't go free. Law is not made for righteous people. Right? The law is not made for righteous people, all right? So it says, if he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, he that smote him shall be quit, only he shall pay for the loss of his time and shall cause them to be thoroughly healed. And if a man smite his servant or his maid with a rod, and he die under his hand, he shall surely be punished. So, so why is it saying he shall be punished if it's his maid and, it, and his maid dies, right? Um, you get punished instead of death, right? So why is that? Because if it's your maid, you own that person. You bought that person. You own them. So that was the law then. It's different now. And there's a lot of, that's, that's a whole nother topic that we could talk about. But, you know, you ask your questions at, at the end. I'm not going to go into that. That's too deep. All right. So, uh, Exodus 21 and 21. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he is his money. There's your confirmation, right? If men strive and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart from her, and yet no mischief follow, he shall surely be punished. Why? Because it's his. It's your own. Anything that you own is yours at that time. Christ came and made it perfect because this, this law was imperfect. But God gave what the people can take. I remember when Jesus said, I have much more to tell you guys, but right now you can't bear that stuff. So as many mysteries of God and deep things of God that, that we can't even bear at this time. But if you go into God and you learn from God, God will reveal secrets and mysteries to you, right? All right. So, he shall be punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him. And he shall pay as the judges determine. So, it's a process, right? It's like courts. That's what the judges is for. It says, and if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give a life for a life. So God wants to cancel out the trouble. He wants to settle differences. God loves justice, and he hates robbery for burnt offering. That's what the word says. He said, an eye for an eye, a two for a two, a hand for a hand, a foot for a foot. Right? He's trying to bring about, bring about fairness. Burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. And if a man smite the eye of his servants or the eye of his uh, may that it perish, he shall let them go free for his eye's sake. It killed his eye, right? And if he smite out his manservant's tooth or his servant's tooth, he shall let him go free for his tooth's sake. That's pretty good. It says, if a if an ox gore a man or a woman that they die, then the ox shall surely be stoned. So they was even judging the animals, right? And they do that today too. And his flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be quit. Right? But if the ox were wont to push with his horn in time past, and it hath been testified to his owner, and he hath not kept him in, but that, have, that, that he hath killed a man or a woman, the ox shall be stoned, and his, also, his owner also shall be put to death. So you're supposed to have control of your animals, control of your things, control of your people. Right. And if you don't and some some harm is caused, you know, uh, justice shall be taken. Right. So if somebody died because you weren't doing your job of being responsible. Boom. 
That's what it is. So the spirit of these laws are still in effect today. The spirit of these laws is still in effect today. Now, not the exact thing, but the spirit of the law, right? All right. It says, verse 30, if there be laid on him a sum of money, then he shall give for the ransom of his life whatsoever is laid upon him. Whether he have gored a son or uh, have gored a daughter, according to his judgment shall it be done unto them. If the ox shall push a manservant or a maidservant, he shall give unto their master 30 shekels of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. <laughs> That's just pu pushing. So this is, this is serious stuff. And if a man shall open a pit or... We come into the close. Only three more verses. Or if a man shall dig a pit and not cover it in the ox or ass fall therein, the owner of the pit shall make it good and give money unto the owner of them. And the dead beast shall be his. So you got to buy it. If you hurt my ox, you made a pit, you made a ditch, you hurt my ox, you got to buy my ox, right? You got to give me the money for it. <laughs> you, if you break it, you buy it. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's what they said. And if, if one man's ox heard another's that he die, then they shall sell the live ox and divide the money of it. And the dead ox also shall they divide. So, you know, this is about fairness. Or if it be known that the ox have used to, uh, to push in time past and his owner have not kept him in, he shall surely pay ox for ox and the dead shall be his own. So what did we learn from this chapter? That God is a fair God. God is a just God. Even then, even when he had to work with people who did not know his laws, who did not know him. That's why he uh, brought them out of Egypt to teach them his ways, to teach them, to teach them fairness. So that's what God wants to teach us. Fairness, justice, how the spirit of the law is still there. You know, where these things come from. Why did our grandparents say these things? You know? Um, they may, may not know these things, but it's written. He said he wrote it on the tablets of our heart. That's our conscience, you know, um, knowing what's right and wrong. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns? Go ahead. You're not supposed to marry someone who's divorced. All right. That's right. Go for it. A pit? A pit is a hole. You got armpits, right? That's what a pit looks like. <laughs> I know you're just asking questions because you're not paying attention. Go ahead. It's important to keep your stuff in a certain place so you won't lose it. Look, God got a message even for the children. That's right. Keep your stuff in, in the right place. Because if I, if I step on one of your toys and I hurt my foot, you better believe. You better believe I'm coming for you. <laughs> Anybody else? Go for it. Mm -hmm. It's something that somebody tells you to do. Just somebody? God tells you to do. All right. Uh, and, like, that's what I got out of that. And, um, God made a heart. Well, God made a heart. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Is that it? Anybody else? Mommy wants you to go every time, so make make sure you're ready. Locked and loaded. Go ahead. Hold up. All right. Anyway, uh, what I got. Um, okay. Um, what I got is that um, we we should uh, always treat others how we, how we want to be treated. That's one. Um, That's right. That's good. We should always treat 
our elders and our parents get respect. Yeah. They don't even try to hit them. Cause yeah. Like, oh, they can box like crazy. If you try, you better get two piece with no sauce. <laughs> <laughs> and, Yo, uh, you funny. Even having a, like even having a thought of that is kind of crazy too, cause like really. Yeah, I mean. To be honest, when I... You know, oh, no. oh, oh, I was going to say it... Go for it. It, it messes up... I, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fix yourself. Fix yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say it messes up... I feel like parents are here to be an example of how we ought to reference and give respect to God. That's right. So um, when you were saying it, you know, I seen it a lot different because mm -hmm. at first, of course, it makes sense. Like first, um, reading the Word of God and reading that the first time in the beginning of my journey, mm -hmm. you know, um, it it didn't hit the way it hits today. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I have a different relationship with God now. Right. From being, you know, with Him and learning to love Him and learning His love and to learn to have reverence and fear and you know to honor him right so now that i have that you know and and learning and understanding that you know having you know parents now children uncles aunts you know god gave us those relationships to learn you know what i'm saying how to reverence him and to look you know that's right look unto him so and respect I, authorities exactly yeah period. so i feel like that's definitely there to learn how to um to honor people and to have respect. Right. Just like we ought to have honor and respect um, with God. So I feel like that's what he was just showing his people after coming out of bondage. Like, right. This is how we ought to live. Right. So they won't be like um, who had them in bondage, ruling over one another, but they were being fair and just and, and treating each one as equals. Right. All right. Go for it. Okay, we're not going to do that anymore, but it's good that you got something. Go ahead. Go for it. You said you got something out of mom's speech. Bob, she was talking about respecting authorities and, and why God gives his uncles and aunts and stuff like that. There you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Y'all better sit down. Y'all better sit down or trouble coming your way. One of the things she said was she has different relationships. So, uh, aren't, I'll have a question to ask you. Aren't you supposed to have different relationships with God every single day? Different relationships with God every day? No. If, That's not how we say it. He's talking about, like, communication, right? We got... Do you know what he's talking about? Or? To me, I feel like because we say you should pray to him, you should, you know, sing to him, you should write to him, you should, you know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking he's he's thinking. Well, you can just ask him. That's what I just did. Oh, okay. Is that what you mean? What? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was going to say that when... I was going to say that when you, what you're talking about, are you supposed to have a different relationship with God every day? So you grow, we grow in mind, we grow in intelligence, we grow in wisdom, right? So our perspective on God changes. So that can be different. But the uncles and aunts and family members and um, high authorities is like um, the angels, uh, God, his Holy Spirit, you know what I mean? Respect and reverence for the Son of God, you know what I'm saying? And and then uh, your parents, you know, it's just teaching order and different types of relationships and how they work and the functions of those relationships. So, and that, yes. What y'all got to say? Um, God made us blessed. God made us blessed? All right. Go ahead, bro. Dad, um, tell us how we get back. 
God give, give us hearts when he get back. That's right. We'll be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. <laughs> The bad guy eats your pizza. Uh, what did that have to do with the word? Um, we make Bibles. How how old are you? <laughs> um, you two? Yeah, sure. So the bad guy ate your pizza, and you said with your powers. With my powers. With your powers. Uh -huh. So you made the bad guy eat your pizza with your powers. Yeah. How how does that have anything to do with what we what we reading about? So, so that means you wasn't listening because you were running around, right? Yeah. Okay. We supposed to be talking about God, though. All right. But we glad you talking because you only two and you talk well. All right. So, so you blessed. All right, y'all. So that was a good service. We'll meet you back in five minutes. We're gonna do Mark chapter three. Um, New Testament is always exciting, and the Old Old Testament or the First Covenant is always interesting. Um and enlightening. So, um, we appreciate you guys. We, we got more people up here than yesterday. Make sure you tell, tell a friend and tell a friend and subscribe to storms enlightenment channel on YouTube. Uh, I believe the link is in the bio and also the storm family on YouTube. All right. I love you guys. I'll see you in five minutes. If you didn't have your pen and your pad and your Bible with you, um, on this service, uh, make sure you get it. And we'll be back in about five minutes or so. All right. Thank you guys so much. Shalom. Shalom.